since his birth in Cory, Pennsylvania, with his umbilical cord wrapped around his neck, to his famed but tarnished career as a paranormal investigator, now to his recent problems with drug abuse and self-destructive behavior, Ryan Buell always seemed close to death's door in one way or another. His early childhood experiences with a paranormal drove him in a life-changing search for answers of what might be beyond this existence. In school, he excelled at debate and journalism. This would help him reach fame when he inevitably reached Penn State University where he sought to create the Paranormal Research Society, or PRS. He caught the attention of executives at a currently small cable company called A&E that hardly anyone had ever heard of at the time, let alone watched. The show exploded in popularity quickly, and Paranormal State was born. While it was not the first paranormal reality show on the air, it was up in the pack at the earliest, and the fact that it was done mostly by college students was appealing to those in younger demographics for the show. Paranormal State lasted for five seasons from 2007 to 2011 at the height of its popularity. So what happened to the show? What happened to Ryan Buell? To answer these questions, we first need to get to know exactly who the man is. The story is deeper than what it appears. Ryan still continues to fight demons but in very different ways now. From the blog on his webpage, Ryan claims that while being born in Cory, Pennsylvania, the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck and he actually had to be resuscitated immediately after birth. Whether you believe it is a coincidence or foreshadowing for the rest of his story is yours to decide. Soon after Ryan's birth, his father joined the Air Force launching them into the constant get-up-and-go routine that comes with being a part of a military family. The moving routine seemed to have taken its toll on the family. His mother and father were divorced when he was four. Ryan would continue to live in Virginia with his mother. His mother had more progressive views on parody. She, for instance, wouldn't mind letting him stay up to watch a scary movie. If he began to get scared, she would tell him that perhaps he should turn it off. He would take this as a challenge and attempt to continue watching. It was partially that this affirmed his love for scary movies. The years pass quietly on, Ryan's mother remarries, and by the time Ryan's seven he gets a new baby brother, Jordan. His stepfather is also in the armed services, so once again, the family must move often. Also, the Gulf War pulled his stepfather out to service in the middle of the night without even a goodbye to Ryan. To add to all this, they were in a brand new area, the Deep South. Even more, they had just been hit by a major hurricane. And his mother was there, all alone, with him and his brother. While growing up and moving, Ryan would have off and on experiences with the paranormal. After his mother tried a few of the local Baptist churches in the area, they eventually became full practicing Catholics. While going through the process of trying different religions, Ryan was having troubling experiences at home with the paranormal through all of it. Initially, he was very quiet about his experiences and what would become quintessential to who he'd become as a paranormal investigator. When asked about it, he would claim that it's hard to describe and is also very personal to him. However, his stance changed on this throughout the years and he has since opened up a little about what happened to him. Here are a couple clips where, in his own words, he describes to us what happened to him in his childhood. Yeah, sure. I mean, like, like most of you guys who are in the paranormal, I think a lot of us have had some type of life-changing experience. And, you know, growing up as a kid in the 80s, early 90s, I didn't, I didn't hear anything about paranormal investigators. I mean, it was Ghostbusters. Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> but, I mean, I just had, like, these really weird experiences when I moved to South Carolina. Um, I mean, just really bizarre stuff. And... You know, as a seven-year-old, eight-year-old kid, I just, I mean, it really kind of traumatized me a little bit. I mean, I remember, like, telling my parents about it, and, you know, so being Catholic, they took me to a Catholic priest, you know, and had to sit down with him, and then the stuff just kept happening. You know, in this, uh, you know, we were in the military, so we moved here, and we rented a house, and just crazy stuff started happening, but it was gradual. You know, like, I'd be in my, come home from school, and, like, I remember being in like the kitchen area and I heard like almost like wood boards like taking on too much pressure and cracking 
I'm mm. like, what is that? It was coming from all over. And then this glass of milk I had just went whoosh, and just broke. So I remember like standing outside my house waiting <sighs> for my mom to come home because I was just terrified. Wow. And then the Gulf War happened, so my stepdad left for that. And like the stress was extra hard on the family. And then just more and more things would happen. Like when I'd be in my room by myself and like, I mean, I would hear someone walking around, you know, the door would open up, the closet doors would open and shut. I'm pretty freaked out. I would scream and shout. And my mom, who's working two jobs by herself, you know, raising us, I mean, in a new place. I mean, she's stressed beyond stress. Yeah. She didn't know what to do. And like, so in a way it was kind of like trauma and I had to kind of, learn to kind of bury it a little bit. Like many other children going through paranormal experiences, his parents didn't exactly believe him either. With me, you know, I had my my family, my mom, and I love my mom. But then it was easier for them to just say, you know what, he's a child, he's making this shit up. Let's just tell him, we'll punish him. If he keeps talking this way, and when my mom would force me into my room, and I would say, Mom, I cannot sleep here. And I'd beg and plead her. I was seeing something, and it was really, really scary. And I knew I was seeing it, and this thing kept trying to attack me. And I would tell my mom, Mom, please let me get out of this room. Please let me stay with you. She said, if I have to come back in here again, I'm going to beat you. And so I was very, very quiet. And this thing attacked me, and I just couldn't help it. I screamed. And when I screamed, my mom came back, and she, you know, she, I guess, you know, she, she, she punished me. It's very weird because if you don't believe in the paranormal, it's like boo-hoo. There are people who get raped, there are people who get abused. I felt like this was just as bad. Only it's something that not everyone will accept because if they don't have the experiences, they won't accept it. What was worse out of all of that was it didn't necessarily hurt my body, but it hurt my heart and it hurt my emotions. And that's when I realized I was alone. For as long as Ryan had strange experiences growing up, and as terrifying as they were, they suddenly stopped. He found great confusion in this, and it changed his outlook on life, as well as the way he lived it. He wanted to know what happened to him growing up. Once in high school, Ryan found a passion for debate and went on to win a state championship. He also joined his high school newspaper and became chief editor. These experiences would help him greatly in later years. Also at this time, most people had discovered and fell in love with the internet. While many people had their favorite sites like Newgrounds or their GeoCities that they held very dear, Ryan was using it to look up and research ghost stories and the paranormal. It was then that he discovered something called ghost hunting, and naturally developed a love for the subject. He eventually ran across the writings of Ed and Lorraine Warren and wrote to them at the age of 14. He told them how inspired he was by them, and that he would someday like to work with them. His wish would soon come true, and they would even forge a very close friendship as they worked together for many cases. Growing up, Ryan had always been determined to go to Penn State, and he would get his wish while still editing the newspaper and working as an amateur investigator. While at Penn State, he created a society there and named it the Paranormal Research Society, or PRS. Ryan's determination for the group would grow on borderline perception, even though only three people originally joined the group. PRS was starting to gain steam in terms of popularity, and Ryan was getting better as a paranormal investigator. It was then that they began getting calls for more high-profile cases. One such case would become known as the Demon of Brownsville Road. As a young investigator, Ryan would work this case with Ed and Lorraine Warren 
and even the Catholic Church to investigate the paranormal occurrences around the house. The owner of the home, Bob Cranmer, eventually wrote a book about the ordeal and the terrifying events that happened. It truly is an amazing and horrific story, and possibly a subject for another documentary. If you're interested, please let me know in the comments. PRS was gaining attention from local media and network executives looking for another breakout show about paranormal investigators got wind of the group. After turning down several offers, an executive from a &E approached Ryan with a more grounded idea for the show that was much more in line with what the group already did. Help people. In early 2006, the pilot for Paranormal State was shot. On December 10th of 2007, the first episode of Paranormal State was aired. At the age of 22 years old, Ryan Buell became a TV celebrity. Over 2.6 million people tuned in for the first episode and those ratings would continue to hold. The show lasted for five seasons and in the fifth season, Ryan would become executive producer for the show. The critical and viewer rating for the show was somewhat mixed however, as it usually is in most paranormal shows. This show, however, did tend to have more of a grounded approach than other shows like it on the air, like Most Haunted. It really seemed like Ryan and his team genuinely did want to help people. The show had a cult following and still manages to hold on to it to this day. Even I remember being in awe when I was first watching this show when it came out. I always thought it was amazing how Ryan, who was almost the same age as me, was able to accomplish so much in such a small amount of time and at such a young age. However, just like with any other paranormal show on the air, there were allegations of fakery and that the whole entire show was staged. There were claims that producers created story arcs for the characters in the show. It's hard to determine whether or not that is actually true. I have done quite a bit of research on it and haven't been able to find anything definitive or any word from the producers themselves saying so. Not that they most likely would. I also came across an article online from an ex-client of PRS claiming that the entire experience was faked. The whole story on that seemed rather fishy to me though. The client themselves claimed to be clairvoyant and the information that Chip Coffee, the show's medium, was giving to them was actually wrong. Seems kinda hard for me to prove that either way so take that as you will. Regardless of all that, by the end of the fifth season, being on the road full time, doing conventions, and basically just helping people out with their problems was beginning to take its toll on Ryan. It was also at this time that he used drugs to begin to cope with the intense stress that he was facing. At the end of it, he ended up taking 70 pills per day to try to cope with the stress. But we'll get more on that later. When offered a sign for his sixth season, Ryan declined, citing exhaustion. In later interviews, he claimed that he went from 22 to 28 years old in a blink of an eye. He felt like he was missing out on his personal life and wanted to go out and explore the world as himself. In 2010, Ryan published his first book, where he also came out as bisexual. In the book, he talks about his sexuality and how it struggled with his faith in the Catholic religion. The LBGT community and even the media seemed to support him fully on this though. Unfortunately, those wouldn't be the only struggles that Ryan would have to deal with post-paranormal state. Upon going to Hollywood, his drug addiction only got worse. He'd consistently disappear for months at a time and miss events and book signings. One particular notorious low point was where he even lied about having pancreatic cancer. When the media asked his mother about this, she immediately refuted it and said that he was on drugs. Obviously, this created much disdain between him, other paranormal investigators, fans, and of course cancer survivors as well. He'd be arrested multiple times after this for violation and for domestic battery as well. Now at rock bottom, Ryan knew he had to do something to change his life. In 2017, Ryan went to Oaks Recovery Center and began the process of getting clean. At the time of recording this, he has been clean and sober for over four years now. Ryan has had several interviews and blog posts since beginning recovery 
and has openly talked about his addiction and recovery process. He has said publicly that he's ashamed and embarrassed of the things that he's done in the past, but anybody who's addicted or who has gone through the process of recovery will tell you that the hardest thing to do is to forgive yourself. I personally wish Ryan and everybody else going through recovery to stay strong and to keep fighting the good fight. Thank you so much for watching my first documentary slash biography. If you liked it, please hit that thumbs up button and also please subscribe to the channel as well as I'm a very new YouTuber so those things actually do go a long way in helping me out and get these stories out to people who would want to hear them as well. If you have anyone or anything else that you want me to do a documentary or a biography about, go ahead and let me know in the comments and I will see what I can do. I'll definitely look into getting a documentary out about the demon of Brownsville Road though because that truly is an amazing story. So we'll see what happens and I'll take it one step at a time from there. Thank you so much for watching and have a happy Halloween everyone.